dollars. What? What? The annual fee is so much of a better deal. Yeah. Okay. And a hundred fifty bucks. That makes all. Uh, that's like. Oh yeah. Do that. Yeah. And then you can decide yeah. whether you want to pay a ticket price and it's right. discounted. Yeah. yeah. All right. I was thinking to get into the treehouse, it was going to cost you a thousand bucks, but no, hundred fifty. No, no. Okay. I, yeah. You can actually look over the 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 bar overlooks the field. Yeah. No, that's a great deal. There's not a ton. Mm. So it's 150 okay. bucks to be in the stadium, look over the field, have a drink. And then if you're like, hey, you know what? I feel like going down into the field. Do you have any extra tickets available? You get a discount on those. Exactly. Nice. And now, probably, how much is I mean, extra depending to on the play game. play second base for the A's? I'm actually going to buy this right now. <laughs> you should <laughs> buy that. it. Buy <laughs> it. Do it. It's so exciting. I have not been to an A's game, a, a home A's game uh, in at least a decade. It's been a while. But um, these I'm, are the years I'm a Giants I, fan, but I have nothing against the A's. These are know? the years I would go to the A's. These yeah. are the media guides from every year. Season ticket holder. It's got Miguel Tejada on the cover. It's 2003 to 2008. I'm thinking twice. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do it after the show. It does seem like a good idea, though. It's a great idea if you can actually make it over there. Yeah. Well, especially like if you know this treehouse bar, whatever it's called, like if it's like if it's like a cool, you know, like you would want to go hang out there and it feels more special than just some bar that's, you know, yeah, you're right. looking at a TV. Right. If you're actually like, oh, I'm at the stadium, like that seems pretty cool to me. Yeah, it, it's outdoors and yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. It's a little hot out there, though, by the Coliseum. That can be can be can be can be a boiler. You get some, uh, you get some freeway kind of fumes. 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 Yeah. A little 880 up your nose. Yeah. You know, also, it's there. Uh, it's more there. Uh, positive signs that uh, Oakland and the A's are going to uh, either they're going to build a new stadium by the Coliseum or the mayor wants him to go by Howard Terminal right next to Jack London. Yeah. The I, last I, I heard thought it was already a done deal that they were building. There stadium. was. And then the college that was good, they were going to do it right by Lake Merritt. And then uh, the college that was going to give them space uh, pulled out. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's just that's the story of the A. That's been the A story since I was a season ticket holder in 2008. They're always like, we have a stadium deal. Oh, wait. No, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Would they you like cold oh, trees? They, at least, I mean, they want to privately build it. All right. Shall we uh, do some tech news? Mm -hmm. Let's tech news it up. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. Nobody else. We ain't waiting on anybody else. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, March 29th, 2018. From DTNS headquarters in Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. From Oakland, California, I'm Justin Robert Young. It's opening day of baseball here in the United States of America, and three of the four of us are wearing baseball hats. Hi, Roger Chang. You're not. I I, I don't follow baseball. Hats. See, Sorry. representing the people in the audience who I don't just feel like, like if Roger doesn't care, just wear a Giants hat because they're like the best ones. Oh, gosh, no. He lives in Los Angeles. Are you kidding me? If he doesn't know be, what he is from the Bay Area, um, Tom. Don't make him. Ugh. All right. I'm just saying it would be like the best hat. It's dangerous for him. Okay. Right. Let's start, however, with a few tech things you should know. Track one. Sources tell Bloomberg Snap is uh, cutting another 100 jobs on the advertising side of the business. This follows cuts in engineering earlier this year as part of a restructuring process that the company started in its uh, fourth quarter. Members of the Office Insiders program of Office 365 will now get to use machine learning powered features in Microsoft Excel. Mm, spreadsheet nerds rejoice. It can now recognize and pull in additional data for geographic locations and stocks. Android Police reports its sources say TCL is going to launch a Palm branded phone on Verizon in the second half of this year. Bring back the trio. Bring back the trio. Uh, TCL actually confirmed last August it would launch some phones under the Palm brand. TCL acquired the Palm name in 2015. TCL also makes BlackBerry handsets. Uh, they might want to try to get in on some of that Nokia action. 
Uber and the family of the woman killed by an autonomous Uber vehicle in Arizona have reached a settlement. An attorney for Elaine Herzberg's daughter and husband said the matter has been resolved. Terms of this settlement were not given. The firm now says it has no further uh, comment on the matter because the case is closed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, still waiting for the investigations to wrap up. There's several mm -hmm. of those going on. Let's talk a little bit more about a shakeup at Microsoft, Justin. Mm, indeed. Microsoft is splitting up its Windows and Devices group. Executive Vice President Raji Shah will lead the new group called Experiences and Devices with Panos Pene continuing to lead Surface Devices and John Belfiore continuing to run Windows Client. The Windows platform is moving to Scott Gunther's. Uh, Guthrie's. Oh man, I got. I went. Joe, all by the way, it's Joe Belfiore. Jokes on Guthrie. It's Woody's uh, Woody's son. His new cloud and AI group, and combining with Azure platform under Jason Zander, Alex Kipman will work on Hololens in this group as part of a new team called AI Perception and Mixed Reality Services. Harry Shum will continue to run the separate group called AI and Research. Former Windows head Terry Meyerson is leaving Microsoft in a few months. For whatever reason, when I read that before, it didn't read as, as much of a, uh, a graduation ceremony. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So what's going on here is they're splitting Windows, uh, the old WDG group, in half. Uh, and because Meyerson was the head of the Windows group and and they're splitting it in half, he's leaving to pursue solo projects. Uh, he's going to stick around for a few months. Seems like it's an amicable departure. Uh, but they are making Joe Belfiore's interface elements, the Microsoft Edge browser, the apps, the client, uh, it, it's, it's its own thing. Uh, under this new group, Surface, uh, or, or what is it, Experience and Devices, along with the Surface. That's the consumer-facing stuff. And they're saying the Windows platform, which is the, the core of the operating system, right? The, the nuts and bolts. They're going to work that as a cloud offering. So there's been lots of rumors about Microsoft 365 and lots of actual moves by Microsoft towards a subscription version of Windows, the same way they have a subscription version of Office, probably targeted towards business. This will make that happen. You'll yeah. now have this, this new place, which kind of has HoloLens and AI, even though there's also a different AI and research. That's the one run by Harry Shum. That one's more about the actual nuts and bolts of machine learning. This one seems to more be about applying AI into the platform with Azure and Windows and creating this new Microsoft 365 subscription product. Seems legit. <laughs> it does. Uh, and and it's, a, it's definitely a continuation of what's been going on with Satya Nadella to say, yeah. Windows isn't our cash cow anymore. Cloud and... Edge. He actually said that in his internal memo to employees, uh, intelligent cloud and intelligent edge. That's where we're at now. Oh, man, how the worm has turned. Uh, the U.S. president tweeted that Amazon is not paying taxes, abuses the U.S. postal system and puts retailers out of business. Amazon uh, is doing some of those things. Amazon used to battle against state taxes. That's kind of an old criticism from back when they were pulling their warehouses out of states to protest over state taxes. Now they're sometimes held up as an example of how to handle state tax collection. They're pretty much good at that. Cities still complain about Amazon. Uh, Amazon pretty much ignores city tax collection needs. Not all cities do retail uh, tax for online, but some do. Uh, and, and those that do, in fact, many do, uh, are very upset with Amazon over the fact that they do nothing to help cities. So maybe yeah, it's a 50-50 one. Uh, Amazon also has a corporate deal that pays the U.S. Postal Service to deliver packages. That's the U.S. Postal Service's business. Now, some have criticized it as a bad deal for the USPS, uh, but Amazon's deal is not unique in that respect, and the USPS wouldn't have to agree to it uh, if they didn't want to. The bigger problem here is the Postal Service very often uh, agrees to, to deals that aren't necessarily in its best interest. So, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, Amazon has been criticized for running out smaller retail businesses since it launched in the 1990s. They were first criticized for running out mom and pop bookstores. Now they're criticized for running out mom and pop everything, uh, including Toys R Us, which isn't even mom and pop. So that one is probably the most legitimate of the complaints about Amazon. If you if you want to grade them on that scale. If you, you know, all of the stuff that you've just listed, Tom, is 
uh, you know, Amazon is problematic depending on who you are and you know how you feel about yeah retail stores, mom and pop shops, and the growing evolution of Amazon's sort of <laughs> stronghold in everything. I'm not exactly sure what the tweet from the current president does. You yeah. know, it's it's it it seems like an echoing of people being like, well, Amazon, you know, they're they don't pay taxes, you know, they're they're ruining everything. It's like, well, I, you know, they yes, you could think of it that way. Uh, you can also think of it as you know, uh, paving a new ground for the way that business works, um, of which they sell literally everything. So, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't know if this is just sort of like a let's all look at Amazon as an enemy or if there's something well, that's going to happen. After that. You know, I, if you follow the reporting from Axios, which does, uh, you know, fit in kind of a sweet spot in terms of their reporting in politics and technology. Part of the issue for Trump is that he looks at Amazon as kind of a, a, a bad a permutation of the economy that is taking out the bedrock elements of the American economy since the 1950s. So retail brick and mortar stores going out of business because of Amazon. Well, if they are going to do that, then they should be paying back more into the government or the economy in other ways. And so we've used the deal that, that they have with the post office and uh, you know, whatever, however people want to uh, uh, factor into the tax thing as as them not doing that so uh, it, it's 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 hard to parse out exactly where we are right now with tech and politics specifically in that there's a lot of different elements of our government that have different kind of critical looks at our leading technology powerhouses and it seems as if uh the executive branch's bugaboo is amazon yeah, uh, Facebook is certainly under the gun from Congress, and Google has been under the gun from from Congress before. Uh, Apple had its run in with the FBI over encryption. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, there's th these big companies are going to attract this kind of scrutiny. I if anything, maybe it's a way to get a better deal for the U.S. Postal <laughs> Service. Well, uh, I don't know. That would that might be worth it. The, the, the post office has said that they're happy with their deal with Amazon, and and that Amazon has. Uh, 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 forget eroding them they have made them more busy and made it economically viable for them to start delivering on sundays for in some markets so who knows your mileage may vary facebook announced it will shut down partner categories over the next six months which will limit how much data it allows advertisers buying targeted ads on the social network to have the company says it will stop using data from third-party data aggregators, specifically companies like Experian or Axicom, to help supplement its own data set. A source tells Recode that although Facebook still uses these companies to help with ad measurement, it's also reevaluating re how that practice works as well. This is this is something that is a good preventative measure because this is something that every website does. When, when you put in an email address, almost every major website is going to cross-reference that with one of these Experian or Axiom type databases and say, well, what else can we find out about this person? Let's triangulate them so we can market to them better. And you may find that creepy. You may find that helpful. Most of you probably find it creepy. But, but the idea is we want to put the things in front of you that are more relevant. And if we know more about you, we can. What Facebook is saying is not that they're going to stop doing that outside of Facebook, mind you on their ad network, but they're going to stop doing it in Facebook. They're going to stop taking what they know about you inside Facebook uh, and combining it with third party data, which means that they oh, they know more about you than just what you've told them uh, because the optics on that are really bad. I would say it's probably not just the optics, but also the fact that Facebook probably trusts its own data collection enough that they feel they can still target you pretty good with ads inside Facebook without having to use that third party data. So it may be saving them some money, too. It's also PR. I mean, uh, talk about part two of uh, the government having some sort of day of reckoning with some of the big tech uh, companies of our of our era. This is a major problem for Facebook with Mark Zuckerberg now possibly going to testify before Congress. We have a big election season coming up for a lot of different uh, congressional seats. I would be curious to see over the next year how much regulate Facebook and having a your right to privacy uh, you know, legislation, the, you know, be a, a, a needle mover. 
Yeah, that's why I, that's why I said the optics are a big part of this because just just the words third party data and your Facebook data it doesn't matter what it actually means. Facebook doesn't want that kicking around out there. Well, and especially, you know, the fact that we're, what, um, just over a month away from F8, uh, where Facebook really wants to be able to, whether or not they end up um, announcing things that have rumored to not be announced anymore, uh, a speaker being one of them. You know, we, we've got just a little over a month to do a lot of, uh, you know, that sort of PR work now, as Justin uh, called it could mean it's a much smoother sailing. F8 going to be an effort to turn the conversation back. Yeah. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that lays the groundwork for Zuckerberg yeah. to come out and say he's sorry on stage mm -hmm. and but here's what we are doing. Here are all the things we've been doing. Yeah. Look at all the, you know, yeah, with all of the changes we've been making because we care about you the user. Man, it's going to be amazing to see uh, uh, the the contingent of DC press at F8 where, where they might not normally go. Yeah, can't wait to hear some JSON conversations with the uh, Capitol Hill reporters. <laughs> Absolutely. In compliance with the EU's GDPR, Apple will update its web page to allow users to download a copy of all data stored with Apple. An update to iOS 11.3 Thursday also includes a splash screen on data privacy detailing how data is used in applications. The update also adds the toggle to disable a feature that slows the phone down in order to help adapt to older battery capacity. There's also the ability to view health records and new animated emojis. Yay, and emojis. How timely is GDPR for companies that want to appear to not be Facebook? Uh, <laughs> this is something Apple was going to do today, no matter what, right? This is this is when 11.3 was coming out. Uh, so this is when they would target to roll in a bunch of their GDPR stuff ahead of the May compliance date. Uh, but boy, it sure does happen on a week where they can point to it and say, look at us. See, you're not our product like you're oh, like Facebook. Uh, Lord. Yeah, we were talking earlier about the slow drawling shape <laughs> delivered from Tim Cook earlier this week about not only, I mean, it, it is a lot of the same lines that he would say about Google. Now it is applied to Facebook because they are the ones in the barrel. But look, for Apple, they're like, this is why we charge $1,000 for a phone, man. So we can get that money and you can keep your data. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, all, all of this, this splash screen and, and, and data downloading from the website, this is all stuff that they have to do. Uh, interestingly, Apple's uh, web page update to download your data will start in the EU. Uh, they aren't rolling it out for everybody at once, although Apple says they will give it to everybody eventually. They, they just have to get it up and running in the EU in May to comply with GDPR. And I feel like the whole anger about battery capacity has just kind of evaporated and they're finally giving you that disable switch if you really want your phone to crash when uh, faster when the battery's old i mean yeah it would, what, what, what a tempest in a teapot that story was but uh, again he, here is something that that really is important though with that uh and we saw it again with facebook uh this week as uh, the whistleblower for cambridge analytica has been testifying in the uk that there are these Urban, I mean, I don't want to. Urban legends sounds dismissive, but these these kind of folk tales of Apple slows down your phone, right? And and there's a million technical reasons to explain why that phenomenon happens. The biggest of which being that they, you know, the operating system demands more, and older hardware runs things slower than the the old software would. Uh, uh, or Facebook is listening to you and targeting ads based on like the ambient microphone. And now you're seeing real world. Uh, these companies can't just laugh these things off. I mean, I think that that the Facebook is listening to you when you don't want to is possibly just as much of a reason why at F8 we might not see a an an, an Alexa competitive speaker yeah. as anything else. Yeah, no, it's 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 the the truth getting close enough to the fiction that people who dismissed it are starting to wonder if they should have. And and yes, you should have. Facebook isn't listening through your microphone. Apple is not slowing down your phone on purpose. Uh, if it, As I've said millions of times before, Apple is probably not too worried about making sure your old phone works really fast. Uh, they're not going to go out of their way, but they're not intentionally trying to slow it down. I'm glad they're adding this disable function. though. It, it's, it's good to give users choice. Yeah. 
Federal appeals court ruled Wednesday that the mobile game Big Fish Casino constitutes illegal online gambling under Washington state law. Big Fish Casino has in-game currency called chips. Uh, it's a casino. Of course, they're going to call it chips that players can use to play blackjack slots, etc. If you run out of the chips, you can either wait for them to refresh. This is like lots of mobile games. Your in-game currency uh, runs out. You get you get new currency after a certain amount of time or, of course, you can buy chips and start playing right away. Well, Washington state law outlaws risking something of value on the outcome of a contest of chance or future contingent event, not under the person's control or influence to receive something of value in the event of a certain outcome. And it sounds like legalese to a lot of you, I know. But basically, Washington state says you can't make somebody risk something of value on the possibility that they'll get something of value back. What? The- That's gambling. Right. That's what the that's what the Washington State okay. law says. It says gambling, online gambling is is not allowed. And it did that's how it defines it, right? The judge in this case ruled that the chips in Big Fish Casino have value. They are something of value because they extend the privilege of playing the game. And therefore, this game violates online gambling rules. Case was brought by Cheryl Cater, who spent more than a thousand dollars on chips and then decided that shouldn't be legal uh, and and brought the case. The decision overturns a 2016 U.S. District Court ruling, and the case now returns to that district court. Big Fish's parent company, Churchill Downs, can either request the case be heard in front of a large appeals court panel or petition for it to be heard by the U.S. Supreme Court. And by the way, that is the Churchill Downs. That's the 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 the, the Louisville, Kentucky, uh, of you know. Is it really? That, that's the. Yeah, I, I just I looked it up. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so so okay, the Churchill Downs, a horse racing outfit, yep. operates an app called Casino. It looks like gambling. Uh, is it though? If you can get the chips, you know, within a certain time frame, let's say a couple of hours for free without paying. Is that still gambling? Apparently it is under Washington state law, according to this court, although the district court said it wasn't. I mean, we are going to see uh, in general. I think legally we are kind of at a flashpoint with a lot of gambling stuff. And and uh, we are kind of seeing, I think, the dawning of, of legal gambling. But that does not mean, in fact, it would probably mean that we would be facing more of, of a moment for getting hard regulations on stuff like this beyond just looking at it as an extension into the illicit world of gambling. Now, Sarah, you you were laughing because because my I was reading the definition of gambling. Well, the, I actually and this is I I'm not a gambler. I get no joy out of any of this stuff. Where I'm like, if I have something of value, I'm not gonna like bet it, but to get yeah. more because I'll probably lose it, right? But, but the you chips know, in your mobile game is that? I, to me, it's not di- like if I go to a casino, a, a a you know a legally operating casino in Washington State, of which there are many. And I play a game online, you know, w- you know, within the same Washington state. I don't, I don't see the difference. <laughs> well, never count your uh, chip. Well, when well, yeah. The, you no, know, there'll be plenty of time for counting. What, <laughs> what this is going to mean if this holds up, right? It has to go back to district court and there might be an appeal and the Supreme Court might weigh in. So we're far from being determined how this is going to play out. If it plays out against Big Fish Casino, though, it could mean that Nintendo's pocket camp is subject to the same law and would be considered illegal uh, because, hey, I have to pay for leaf tickets to do things in pocket camp uh, or I can earn them. But if I can't earn them, I have to pay for them. Therefore, there's something of value uh, and any any game that has loot boxes certainly could fall under this definition. So it could have much more wide ranging impact. I mean, the, again, it, this is you know I, I'm being a little dramatic, but like okay, we're talking about data practices with Facebook and how everybody's very upset. Like we didn't really know you know what the implications were of all of this. I feel like gambling, and I use that term loosely to uh, include, yeah, buying tokens so that you have a better but fun time in some app than you would have if you just play for free. That isn't going to like ruin everybody's life, but for some people, it is a real issue. And I don't think that, that should be taken lightly. Mm, that's a fair point. Uh, I just wonder if that there's different regulations needed to be done for that versus actual like... Uh- put in thousand dollars by the way a little addition to this story uh, churchill down sold big fish games to aristocrat technologies for 
$990 million. At least they announced the sale in December of uh, last year. So, I mean, who knows whether or not Churchill Downs wanted to who buys a, a a property that's in the middle of a years long legal dispute? That's a, that's an interesting question. Apparently, Aristocrat Technologies Incorporated yeah. from all horse racers, Tom. Aristocrats, <laughs> yes, of course, aristocrats. <laughs> aristocrats. Would Do you guys want to talk about dating apps? Of course, oh, because wow. you're wait, the only one wait. here that knows about them. <laughs> all right. Well, well. For us, we let's hope you. so. Let's hope that's true. Bumble filed a lawsuit late Wednesday claiming that Match Group, which owns Match.com and Tinder, uh, stole trade secrets through something called fraudulent behavior, those Bumble's words, but also hurt Bumble's chances of selling an equity investment or possibly selling itself, interfered with its business operations, and is asking for $400 million in damages. You might recall that Match filed its own patent infringement lawsuit against Bumble earlier this month. We talked about it on the show. Bumble's lawsuit claims that Match offered to buy Bumble for $450 million knowing knowing this was last June, that it was a lowball offer, and then did some due diligence. Bumble said, hmm, offer's too low. And then Match failed to make a serious offer. What Bumble's kind of getting at is that they just wanted to know what was going on under the hood of the business, right? And pretending to want to buy it. Bumble founder and CEO Whitney Wolf Hurd was a founder of Tinder, which Match now owns, and filed a sexual harassment lawsuit when she left the company in 2014. That whole thing is not part of either of these lawsuits that the companies are now waging against each other. But it's an interesting uh, detail considering that she's now running Bumble and the companies probably aren't getting along all that well. Now, their relationships are also fraught, right? Uh, does this change your perception of the trustworthiness and reliability of using these apps, though? Well, I'll say this. Uh, if you hang out on any dating app for, oh, let's say 30 days, right? And then you, you sort of say like, okay, these are the three. You you start to see, you know, it's kind of the same. You start to see familiar faces. Mm. You start to see, you know, familiar bios, familiar behaviors. The apps all start, you know, looking like each other, like, you know, lots of social networks, right? You know, yeah. where there's chat options and you have pictures and you can, you know, hook it up to your Instagram. So quite honestly, I, you know, I, I get why both companies would be like, well, you know, the other one seems to be, you know, stealing our stuff. But as an end user, I see very little difference. But I also think that if Match was to, you know, say to Bumble, hey, you know, we, we're looking to buy you. We, we want to give you this like insultingly low offer. But, you know, while we kind of figure out what you're actually worth, let's, you know, get some trade secrets. And if they actually took those and ran with them, Bumble has a case here. I don't know if that's true. And obviously, there's a lot more uh, information to come out in this um, in the story. But it's you know it's, it's your typical competing products work basically the same. Now you know one of us has to go down. Yeah. Uh, well, we will keep following the ups and downs and ins and outs of the relationships of Bumble and Match and Tinder. These are the days kind of a liars. triangle some kind mm -hmm. folks if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com on your amazon echo on your google home on your anchor app or even just in an rss feed that you decide where to put at dailytechheadlines.com hey sarah is that a mailbag i see sure is uh we got an email from peter and this is in um response to a conversation we had with chris ashley about software as a service and where it's all going and and you know when it's good and bad he says here's some different context i'm a millennial that chose to be a technical salesperson in hardware sales instead of cloud sales the reason i chose to be where i am is because i believe there will be a shift back to on premises the drive for cloud right now is usually coming top down from executives. They have to have a broad understanding of many things, including IT. Their vision of what cloud usually comes down to, two things to oversimplify. First, cost savings, both in uh, compute, uh, uh, computer resources and people resources, right? So you don't blame I for taking all the jobs. The second is agility of the business, which includes agility for developers to create more software as a service offerings. It all ends up getting uh, touted as a sexy thing to do for executives. Move to the cloud. That's what you're always hearing, right? It's the future. In some cases, though, it might be their mandate from on high. Executive Jim, cloud fly the business. 
he goes on to explain a little bit more about what he means. But yeah, so this is this is a bit of a counterpoint from Peter saying, you know, a lot of this cloud stuff, not that it's a bad idea, but depending on who's running uh, these 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 divisions, you know, is it really the right thing for every company? Peter says, no, not for me. Yeah, uh, we actually got an email from Ruben in Monterey, Mexico, saying the exact opposite of this, which which kind of mirrors what Chris was talking about yesterday. Uh, so we wanted to give a little more time to the counterpoint. But it was interesting to get those back to back uh, because Peter's like, no, it'll swing back. Come on, you guys. And and Ruben is like, no, it'll never go back. It's uh, Everybody's going to stay in the cloud. There's, there's all the advantages that you guys were talking about. So I it's anybody's guess which way it's going to go, but it's an interesting perspective. And uh, big thanks to Peter and Ruben for writing in. Peter uh, wrote us from Misty Toronto, as he explained it, by the way. And Always look at like that. To give a shout out to our Canadian hat. Canada and Mexico talking about SAAS. How on about DTS. that? Yeah. yeah. It's, like a little, it's all like a little sass sandwich. <laughs> It isn't. <laughs> hey, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. I actually had a nice little conversation with some folks today about you, the subreddit and what we use it for. Uh, and uh, one of them suggested like, hey, have you guys done an uh, AMA in a while? So um, I think we should do an AMA on the subreddit. We'll talk about that. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and keep an eye out. Maybe we're going to do that AMA. And of course, you can also chat with other folks at facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Justin Robert Young, besides running into uh, football players on the street in your in your neighborhood, what's going on? Oh, well, you know, it's mostly that. It's mostly me bumping into my friends. <laughs> but but it's other a pre show that, discussion we had, if anyone's like, what? I, I, yeah. I can I can also squeeze in my career as a political pundit at politics, politics, politics dot com. Uh, and uh, uh, also stickers or DIAF.com. Let's plug that. You can go get stickers and pins. Diamond Club branded stickers and pins at stickers or DIAF.com. Hey, folks, we are at two more patrons than last month. Uh, so that, that gets us to our goal of at least one, in fact, doubles it to two. Can we make it three, perhaps four, uh, at least keep it in the positive realm for the next two days before the month ends. Uh, thanks to everybody who's been joining up, uh, and supporting the show. I know a bunch of people signed up at the $5 level just today. Uh, so go to patreon.com slash DTNS and take a look at our hot takes. Uh, it's a weekly column I write where I just shoot from the gut before I start thinking about it later for the show. Uh, and you get a little unfiltered version of what I think, plus a recap of all the news of the week uh, that is only available at patreon.com slash DTNS. We love your feedback. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're looking at Twitter and you know all that stuff, but hey, email is a great way to do it. We are also live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. End of the month roundtable episode on space featuring Bobak Fedowski, Ariel Waldman, and Rob DeMillo. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> it's Bobak. Bobak. Sorry, Bobak. Mm. You can apologize tomorrow. In person. <laughs> well, I'm excited. And that yeah, was also a very good show that we just finished. Yeah. Hey, good times. Meaty good times. topics today. Meaty. Yeah, I know. Not like Arby's meat, but like real meat. We have the meats. <laughs> you know, until they start stocking like lamb or something else. I don't know if that's really true. I mean, they have some meats. Maybe they should change it to some. We have some meats. We yeah. have a meat. <laughs> What's the coolest, oh, like, is that Jenny Josephson I see in the lower what? left? Oh, what an amazing run in. Jenny Josephson. Hi. Can you hear What's me? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can. All right. She's also wearing a hat. What? All right, I'll wear a hat. I'll wear a hat. Oh, no, man, you got to represent the non baseball people yeah. proudly, I'm, not wearing I'm your gonna hat. I'm going to wear a visor from the corner store. <laughs> Asian guy hands out lotto tickets and cigarettes. Hey, uh, can one of you guys introduce me to Sarah Lane? Sarah hey, Lane, Sarah. have you not met Jenny Josephson? I no. thought I had. I don't think so. Oh, oh hi. Like we just know each other. Yeah, I, I feel like I know you. 
Sarah, <laughs> the weird thing Jenny, about Jenny, doing a, a show on the internet every day where you're like, do I, have we done this before? Not enough <laughs> have we met in person? I don't know. <laughs> Hi. 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 Is that an animal next to you? Yes. Oh, oh you, have see. Had, you definitely haven't met Jack. <gasps> oh, buddy. Look at Flo. <laughs> Were you guys talking about tech? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. No one nope, cares. we finished. What All right, good. Little, little pup. That's oh. Jax. Oh, Jax. Look at that fluff. Yeah, more importantly, I mean, meet Jenny, but also meet Jax. Yeah, Jax <laughs> is really the president of the new company, so. <laughs> well, good. Is Jax yes. like a Pomeranian? Like, yep. full yeah. on little goober. Just a little goobs. Little gooper. How's everybody? I missed you. Good. Yeah. If anybody listening doesn't realize, Jenny, of course, uh, the original producer of Daily Tech News Show, uh, still an important advisor to the show. And uh, what, do you, what do you got going on? Well, last day yesterday. They call it yesterday, I think. Uh, yesterday was my last day uh, at the public radio show Marketplace, uh, where for the last... I guess two years and one month. Wow, has it been uh, long? Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, time is a flat circle. It was really uh, <laughs> an amazing run. And uh, I've got to be a little more bi-coastal these days, um, spending like a lot of time in New York and a lot of time in LA. And so I just, I've decided to uh, put out my own shingle. Well, that's amazing. I'm that's so, so great. What is, what is what is the first? Uh, are, are you going to be doing more? Tell it anyways, or uh, what? What? Is, give me give, give us the right. thumbnail. All right. So the thumbnail is: I'm, I have a company that does podcast consulting. It's called InfiniteGain.co. Uh, it's a that's a little audio joke for those of you who know the audios. Um, and it's also what some people were saying was happening with our volume. At, at, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. If only audio, gain was infinite. Bad audio. <laughs> like, uh, and so um, I have three podcasts soon to be announced that I'm consulting with. It's very exciting. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm going to obviously do all the um, the tell it anyways that can fit into a studio. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited. That's so great. Can yeah. I, can I, Congrats. Can that sounds so fun. I can't wait to hear more about it. Can I be on Tell It Anyway, finally? Oh, my gosh. Can, you're my favorite. Can your ban of yeah. me on Tell It Anyway be lifted, finally? I just figured I wasn't worthy. <laughs> I've asked for you. I've asked to be on the show like multiple times and you keep. Oh my like, gosh. All right. You tell me here's, here's literally what you've told me multiple times. I really want you to come down to LA and do it like with Molly Wood. That's and true. it's like when I, I see, I've seen Molly like three times in person over the past, like five years, the chance is here today. She's right here. Well, okay. Well, I don't. Again, you might just tell me no. It's fine. Uh, just tell me you don't no, want to go. No. I'll get over it. Nope. You will be on Tell It anyway. Everyone will be on Tell It anyway. Um, I have not been on Tell It. Anyway. I know. <laughs> no, none of us have. This Jenny, is a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I, I very much look forward to the uh, Justin Robert Young stories. Um, so yeah, things are pretty good. How are you guys? Uh, good. Where's the chat room these days? It's still oh. the where you left it. Okay. <laughs> it's at irc.chatrealm.net. That realm. That's what I was missing. Uh, Roger, what's our title? Our title is uh, Amazon. Um, no, that was uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Nuts and Bolts. Cloudy with a Chance of Nuts and Bolts. Ooh, that's good. I like it. I like that. I like it. I'm going to sneeze. Uh, no, I'm not going to sneeze. No, going to sneeze. No. Good, good. I hate that. Uh, hey, by the way, in 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 draft news, mm, like, movie draft, yeah, it looks like a fifty million dollar opening weekend for Ready Player One. Ooh, Ooh. that's the projection. Projection hmm. that would be up from I think where it was tracking. I think it was tracking in the high thirties, low forties. So this would be a little bit more than what people were expecting. Yeah, that's that's uh, who's who's got that again? That'd be me, me oh. and Brian. Mm. Team Night Attack, you say? Oh, a coincidental. Oh, no one's gonna see that movie. I mean, somebody uh, Brett wanted to see it with me uh, last night, uh, but I didn't get a chance to do it. Uh, the the reviews are good though. 
I, I heard I heard some uh, some positive feedback from friends of ours that have seen it. So uh, the the general from South by Southwest on when it when it had its surprise screening, the the reviews have been if you're into the '80s reference part of it, you'll love it. Mm-hmm. If if references like that bug you, which they do, some people, yeah, it, it's too much. It's going to be too much for you. But the story is solid. Uh, in in okay. amongst that. That seems to be the boiling down what I've what I've read. I might then I might be annoyed with the movie. Yeah, you did not like the eighties. No, I love the eighties. The thing is, I can't stand constant name dropping referencing. Oh. Like, I don't mind if it's in a movie, but if it's like like over present, it becomes obnoxious to it's me. It's a fair point. It's a fair point because for many years in creative writing classes, they told you never to drop in pop culture references to anything you were writing. Oh, hey, you guys, I have a phone call on the internet. <laughs> I've done this for a while. <laughs> I was like, is this where this court goes? VoIP. Um, so uh, anyway, yeah, I get it. That's fair. You know, that is one of the issues that I have with the series Halt and Catch Fire. Which is oh. a good series, and it, it, you know, it got better. some people that you know, some some peers of mine are like that series is w- wildly underrated. It's so good, and it is smart and good, but it's so specific about like, oh yeah, oh that they're talking about time. what happened in 1987. Yeah, that it it uh, infuriates me, and I can't watch it. Hold on, let me put down my like cola, and I'll yeah. Is it like that? No, I, yeah, it's not like that the, bad. But it's very, it's very, it, it's it touches very, it's, on lots of things that happened in the early days of what we now know as, you know, our modern computing world. And it is, to me, very heavy handed. Boy, that Reagan it's, sure is president. Meanwhile, <laughs> you know, well, that's the thing, though. It <laughs> wears a lot of those references on its I ran contrarians. Which, which. How's that you know, software build going? They, they make an effort, they make an effort to make sure you notice or at least it's noticed. Yeah. Instead there's of just a, being in the background. Wrong with it. Maybe it's too close, you know? Maybe it's too close to all of us. So it's, it's like what they do. It's like when it's like that song Bowling for uh that band Bowling for Soup. They do that song like 1985 or whatever. Mm. Um Bowling they just, for Soup. They, that sounds like a great idea. It's uh it's a it's a very mediocre band. <laughs> As Roger uh, drops overt 90s references. Right. It's it's a 2000 ish <laughs> Yeah. No, 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 it was. Yeah, 1985. Yeah, uh, Roger actually got every bit. Of it. I got the song, but the thing is, there. It's one of those things where they just drop like cultural references, but it's it's a pastiche, so it really isn't coherent. It's just there to. It's the 80s, so this is what you get. It's like, hey, all right, I get it, sort of. It's it's. I mean, I I can understand the fan service or like the kind of uh, cohort service that that offers, but. You know, at the at the same time, it's like okay, I get it. I'm being pandered to. Quit hitting me over the head with a giant wrench of, oh look, it's Knight Rider. Oh, which would would it beat the DeLorean from Back to the Future? Or what about Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Are we going to have one of those? Or I don't know. What Bunch year? What year did Manimal hit? Five eighty five. Because that, was it, was that, that is Peter one York? of. I mean, it's and I'm not even being ironic. You think I am, but I'm not. That's one of the best things that ever came out of that decade. 1983. September 30th, 1983 was the first episode of Manimal. Ah, oh, so good. If anyone doesn't know what Manimal was, it was a PI slash detective show, but it featured a protagonist because of his long stay with the Latin or a, a tribe in the Amazon was able to morph into different animals to get him out of different I mean, situations. This is the superhero movie we all need. Yeah. <laughs> and it's we, interesting you know, because oh I'm sorry. No, I'm I'm just I'm just excited. Well Animals it was kind of it's really a cool. variation on uh DC's Animal Man. DC comic they had, there's a character named Animal Man who kind of does something very similar. Well, I'm a big uh, fan of the MCU, the Manimal Cinematic Universe. Yeah. It's well, great. it's funny because they referenced that character in an episode <laughs> of was it uh super superpower? There was a there was a '90s uh, uh, syndicated show, kind of like a Saturday afternoon like superhero show, and uh, they referenced his character, except that it was his daughter that was now the manimal person. It was only Jenny, on a scale of one to ten. 
How much did you anticipate joining a manimal type conversation today? It does not surprise me uh, in the least, and I'm super glad to be listening. So, to so it. this is the this is the common cultural reference for manimal and today is that the favorite animal form of our protagonist was a black panther. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is one of the best parts of the Wikipedia article about Manimal is that, you know, it goes on, it says that he's a shapeshifter. He can turn himself into any animal. However, while Jonathan, that was the character's name, had the ability to change himself into any animal, he would transform into either a hawk or a black panther in nearly every episode. <laughs> it's because that's it's that's the uh, guys they contracted out to have the trained in. DC and Marvel. Listen, being a snake, being a you know alligator, being a leopard, all great. But mm, hawk or black change panther any is animal good. I want to. I just don't want I, to do anything. I just black like the animal. hawks the best. He did turn into a snake once, right? And that was to save the female. Well, uh, that's when Manimal jumped the shark, Roger. That's, it was a snake it. episode. No, no, it was a snake episode because she was drowning in quicksand, and he turned into a snake so she could grab onto him, and the other guy would pull him out. Also, just one of the best like movie things that only happen in movies is people drowning in quicksand. Like, well, I think it happens in the real world, but we're not there to see it, right? Or does it not happen? Right, but like this is like Indiana Jones drowning in quicksand. Like quicksand is like a thing where like ah, you know, I'm really good at a lot of stuff, but I still might die right. in this quicksand right now. It's super budget friendly, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's one of the great things about so many of those kind of superhero sci-fi fantasy shows from the 80s is, you know, they had a limited budget and you could tell because, A, they would reuse a lot of the same footage over and over and over again. And when they shot like sequences, it it was always very tight close ups. Right. So they wouldn't need to show the whole body like flying through the air or like dodging a laser gun or something. Right. They would just have a close shot of the face or the torso or just the feet. And they could do something with the feet, and that was it. You didn't need to show the whole thing. Saved so much money that way. Or you just go to, uh, uh, what was it? Um, who's the guy who does all the Hollywood cars? George Barris. Really you know? in depth into Manimal. <laughs> I have right. never seen Roger more excited than to talk about Manimal. Manimal, the master, Captain Power. Uh, That's which the are thing all with easy. Roger is like he'll kind of just sit there silently for a while, and but like if you hit the right note, he you hit he the comes right alive. switch. It's just a torrent yeah. of stuff you didn't right, want. Right, right. Where Roger's like, I've actually thought about this for many decades. Yeah. Did we pick a title? Yes. We did. Actually, Roger it's did. Just cloudy with a chance of nuts and bolts. Okay. Yeah. He fulfilled his his producerial duty. I didn't know if he just got so swept up in the manimal. <laughs> oh, I guess. Yes. The title of today's show is Manimal. Manimal. Remember that? <laughs> you know, that is that is ripe for a reboot. Actually, there was there's a bunch of shows from the 70s, like Man from Atlantis with Patrick Duffy. Can we have the, one animal too, or just manimal? Could have it could be man of men. Mole. Man, oh, menimals. <laughs> menimals, right? Menimals. If you have a group. Very small animals. <laughs> or humanals. <laughs> Okay. Oh, actually, no. They did that. Sh- they did that teen series or tween series about the teens that tur- that because of these aliens uh, were given powers to fight off another group of invading aliens by being able to shape shift into different animals. Hey, did you know you can watch all the Manimal episodes for free if you hit that little button that says "Stop Broadcast"? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Stopping broadcast. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, Space episode tomorrow. Animorphs. That was the show. Uh, book series, cartoon, and more. Bye.